Hey guys, welcome back to Scheming with Schwartz. Today's episode is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get into the adjustments that can be made on the front side of zone versus pressure. So we'll talk about cross dogs, talk about a pirate stunt, talk about free safety pressure, Mike Sam scrape, and we'll talk a little bit about backside adjustments just because it will play a role in how the front side of inside zone is blocked versus pressure. Hope you guys enjoy this one. We're going to start talking about adjustments for front side pressure on this inside zone look but talking about what it means to adjust. So I mentioned earlier that the center has this A gap, but only if his guy comes to the A gap. If the D tackle slants like this, then the guard has to block him, the center has to find his way up to the mic. Well, an adjustments on inside zone really end up just taking the center front side right now, and it becomes a full gang zone, uh, almost turning into an outside zone essentially. And the call the center will make will gang. So any type of front side pressure right here, the center can gang everybody over here. So the most common out of this is a too high look, it's called a pirate. And a pirate stunt is essentially the defense trying to create an eight man box with the movement up front. So the pirate stunt, the D tackle will come here like this. The DN will spike right here, so the A gap and B gap are covered. The Sam will come straight downhill like this, and the mic will bounce over the top. And the movement of the mic right here is to essentially create an, un, an unblocked guy because if the offensive line screws this up and doesn't have a game call right here, the center will get caught up in this mess, and when the back comes to run right here, he'll have to come right here uh, like that. And one last thing that um, can also happen is the D-tackle actually can loop over the top. It happens very late at times and, and not always something that every team does. And so the ideal situation is the center sees what's happening and calls a game call. Any of these guys can see it as well. And the signs for Pirate obviously are too high, but the mic will also cheat back just a little bit so you can get depth as he comes across. The Sam will probably cheat up a tiny bit, and these guys will have weight on their inside hand, and you can easily tell. They can, and the DN might actually come in a little bit just as well. So if you call a game call and you get everybody coming in this direction, it's pretty easy to block. The center blocks his A-gap, has a D-tackle, the guard has the DN right here. The tough block are these two guys, the, ta the tackle and the tight end. They have to block the Sam almost together, move him off the ball a little bit and wait for the mic to show over the top. And when the mic shows over the top, the wide tight end will come off and block him. If you don't get a good piece of this Sam right here, he can penetrate right here and make the play. So it's important that these two guys really know who they block because when the movement happens, sometimes the wide tight end doesn't realize, oh wait, we have the mic because the center has the mic and he's blocking this guy right here. So it's important to pass along the call to the wide tight end so he knows and you can double team that Sam all the way up to the mic. And look, it's pretty much a home run right here, right? If you everyone blocked, the back can take it out the front door. This guy's blocked right here. It's one on one versus a two high safety who's ditching at the snap. Um, and the backside is really simple. They're still going to have their gaps, so you do the same technique. Then on a game called the guard, notice he has him by himself. The tackle blocks the end, and the U blocks, um, excuse me, the tackle blocks the will, and the U blocks it. So that's Pirate versus. Um, this inside zone right here, and we're gonna to get to the Mike Sam scrape next. Now we're gonna to get to the Mike Sam scrape. This is not as common of a pressure from a three technique side. Normally you're gonna get that type of pressure um, with an under front with the D tackle here, but we're talking more about the strong side runs right now, and um, eventually we'll get to where it makes more sense to run this play. But if you're just gonna expect a Mike Sam scrape right here, it's almost like a pirate stunt, but these two guys have different assignments. So you're gonna get, you get it right here, you're gonna get it right here, you're gonna get the Sam coming outside for contain, and the Mike coming right here. So you can see it's a lot of moving parts, and defense sometimes can't really get to their gaps. So that's why they don't like to run this play. Um, it makes it really easy for the offensive line to block, um, to block this play up right here. There's no really suspense, and um, it, it's even worse than a pirate. That's why teams don't run it from this look, but it can be done, and this is one pressure that you might have to deal with. And as the offensive line, you can see it's, it's pretty easy to block these guys. They're well spaced out, and the back can just come right in between these guys and hit a home run right here. So it's more run from underside, and we'll get to that in a little bit later. So this is the Mike Sam scrape. Now let's talk about a cross dog. So I'll get to a cross dog. Um, cross dog is typically run from a one high, so we'll have the safety rotate down. It's typically Mike, Mike Will cross dog. We'll have the the strong safety will come to the middle or vice versa, um, either way. But what happens, I mean, let me put a running back in here. There we go. So on a cross dog, the, the, the wheel has to obviously cheat a little bit to get there. So 
But I, so these guys will kind of move a little bit. That's where you get an eight-man box right there with, with the safety down. And um, a cross dog really ends up being involving the back side. We talked a little bit the first two ones about the center kind of coming front side. I'm more worried about here. But a cross dog will really affect the back side because this tackle right here has to block the will. So he has to get there. But if they cross dog, so typically it's a Mike, will cross dog. Mike is first, will is second here. That really frees up the will unless you see it coming and you call game call. A game call brings everybody front side, so the D-tackle will expand. Typically, you can tell a cross dog is coming because the D-tackle, instead of being on the center right here, he lines up on the guard as a 2-eye, and that's a good tell for cross dogs. It opens up the space in the middle, but the D-tackle will come here on a cross dog. This will expand right here. So on this game call right here, the, the tough block is these two guys right here. They have to switch off the mic. So they're going to come right here at first because the center sometimes doesn't really know it's going to be Mike Will. And Will can actually read out of it and come over the top with, with Flo going strong. But these guys have to basically block the mic and then come off and block the Will. It's easy enough done when you know it's coming. But again, it's all about patience and bringing everybody here. And then the tackle has to get over here. And really, if you block it up right here, there's a huge crease right here. And uh, I actually like running cross dog with inside zone uh, strong. And um, so that you saw, we covered the Pirate, we covered the Mike Sam Scrape, we covered a Cross Dog. There are a couple more that you can do. They're really simple. You know, you can, they can bring a strong safety down here as number four and add on, and you just block out to him. That's really simple. Some teams actually don't even block a strong safety here. You can throw something behind it. Uh, they don't want uh, the Sam unblocked in this protection, uh, excuse me, this run play, and there's many ways to do that. But here's the ultimate way to end any of this stuff and, and be successful in this run. And because you are so balanced in your formation, let me kind of get these out of the way right here, use my hand, because you're balanced in the formation right here, you can just run it the other way. And this is the preferred way to run this run, is to run it where you have two double teams. So the preferred way, if it's balanced like this, is to run it to the open side because it gives you guys, run it weak, because it gives you two double teams at the point of attack. So it's gonna be, really it ends up giving almost three double teams, so he's, Right here, boom, boom, double team, double team, double team, double team, double team, and right here. So this is the preferred way you would just check this play over to the left if you have it called to the right. And that actually takes away a lot of, of the adjustments to pressure. So if you see a Mike Will cross dog coming, boom, boom, and you check it this way. Look at this, there's a huge hole right here. If this guard can block, seal that 2i who's coming across right here, the end will expand. It's a ginormous hole. The, the, the left tackle has that will, but when the will goes back this way, he can just pin the D-tackle right here, and you have a huge wall of run right here. So this is the advantage of running this play kind of from this look, is being able to check it anytime you want away from pressure. You have a pirate, check it away from pressure. You have Mike Sam scrape, check it away from pressure, and run it, to, run it this direction. So it's, it's good having a quarterback who knows all the checks and the way the game is moving towards where you get to the line of scrimmage, you get set right away, you have time to make all these checks, even without a tight end right here, um, and you remove one of the guys on defense, you can call a play to the right strong, see pressure coming weak, and call it over here. So this is um, a, really the best way to adjust to any pressure on inside zone that's coming strong is to just run it weak. And you can just check it really easily with a balanced formation, and um, that's the way I would advise to just not have to worry about all those adjustments, just run the ball weak, and you'll have success. As you can see, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made on inside zone, really on any run and play. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It was easy to digest and understand. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I love giving uh, replies to those. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next one.